And welcome back to Jeff Kainange live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski on this Inspiration Thursday. I tell you, women achievers. When you talk to Dr. Susan Boya Kidero, I tell you, even I get inspired. She's done so much, not just for herself in her own personal career. She's done it for 350 girls across the continent over the last 15 years at a cost of six billion Kenya shillings. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? Yes, she has. Through the Zawadi Africa Education Fund. And right now, here with me are three brilliant young recipients. Right here. First up, next to me, Layla Muhammad went to Coast Girls High School and ended up at St. Lawrence University. She'll tell you about her career because it's just incredible. In the middle there is Kagure Wamunyu. She was at Alliance Girls, no less. Ended up with a master's at North Carolina State University. She'll tell you the in-between. Right now, she works for Uber. That's right. She's in charge of operations. How about that? In her 20s. How does that happen? And right next to her is Leo Chieno. While she got a scholarship to Simpson College in the U.S., discovered, listen to this, that she had leukemia. She thought it was all over. They Thanks to Zawadi Africa Education Fund, they flew her mother over as a donor. And she battled it and survived and graduated from Simpson. Came back, worked for Amref Health. I tell you, these stories are not made up. Keep tweeting. At Susan Boyer, at Zawadi Africa, at Koinanga Jeff, the hashtag best and brightest. And that's exactly what these young ladies are. Ladies, good to see you. See you too. My goodness, you guys make us old fogies, us, not Susan and them, us people. <laughs> you make us look bad. Go on, tell us your story. Coast goes high. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Um, well, my name is Leila. Yeah. I was born and raised in Mombasa in a small town called Likoni. Uh, I went to a small primary school called Likoni Muslim. We didn't have doors or windows any of that, and it was the only primary school that my mother could afford. It was only 500 shillings for the whole year. So I finished uh, high school, and I, I mean primary school, and I had 311 out of the possible 500. Wow. Now with meager resources and not enough teachers, I was able to get that high, and I got accepted into Coast Girls High School. Mm -hmm. And was Coast Girls like the main uh, girls high school in Mombasa? Yeah, it was a district school. Yeah. And so I, I know a lot of people used to say it's just a district school, you know, nothing fancy. But when I went to that school, it was a three-story building. There was a lot of teachers. There was a library. There was resources. I was the second last in the list of 200 to be accepted there. But I finished the first with an A, the first time in the history of the school. And so when I finished high school at Coast Girls, uh, my mother, who is my main role model, a hard worker, taught me the work ethic and persistence that I still carry to today, uh, sells shoes and clothes at Marikiti, which is a big market in Mombasa. So when I finished high school, I knew we didn't have the money for university, but I knew there was this small shop and this was our main source of income. So I was going to invest my time and the little talent that I learned, learning with my peers and customer service to work on her thing. So I wasn't even looking at the future. I knew I was going to make it, uh, but I wasn't looking at it. Yeah. Because they, this was my focus. You're going to sell shoes as best as you could? As best as I could. Oh my goodness. So while doing that, one of my customers told me, hey, there's this scholarship for an IB, which is International Baccalaureate. Yeah. For a, in a school called Aga Khan Kensek near Likoni. Yeah. So I, was, I told myself, this is a good opportunity. So when opportunity knocks, you have to answer. So I went there and I learned about the scholarship. I had the grades. I uh, took the papers. Just as I was about to leave, the guy comes running, literally running and stopping me at the gate and saying, hey, by the way, here's a brown envelope. Could you ch it's about a scholarship in the U.S. Just check it out. So I was very curious. I look at it. I read it quickly. And, of course, it's a letter from Dr. Susan Boyer. And that was when it was an idea. And she had already succeeded in sending about mm. 10 girls by then. Mm. That was 2007. Mm. So that was about the March 2006. 
and the meeting was supposed to happen in April at the same time. So I go, I'm excited, I go to the shop, of course, because I just took a break so that I could go for the scholarship information. I tell my mother, of course she didn't have the money to take me to Nairobi, but she said, you know what, Leila, we're going to figure it out. And she did. So I come, I tell my friend who actually went to Sheikh Khalifa, uh, she also had an A and she was looking at opportunities anywhere she could find. So we come together to Nairobi, we meet with Dr. Susan and uh, her late mother, mm. Pamela Mboya. Mm. Very inspirational meeting we yeah. had. It was yeah. actually just at Hallingham near Yaya. Right. And to cut a long story short, you yes, made it to America. It to what America. about your friend? My friend gave up after that meeting. Oh. That's what I was trying to hear. Okay. Yes. Where is St. Lawrence? Uh, New York State. It's New York State? Yes. So when you came to Nairobi, did you speak the way you're speaking? No, oh, just checking, I wouldn't just even be able to look at you in the eyes. <laughs> All of the shyest Susan will tell you. I used to shake in really? high school, yes. Really? Kagure, so. what's your story? Go on. So I... Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Nairobi. I grew up in an area called Ngoroi, towards Ongatirongai. And that has something to do with what I do today, which I'll get to. Mm. Um, and so when I was a little girl, I was told, if you work hard, you can get into Alliance. And so... I remember I was in pre-unit and my dad showed me Alliance and said, you want to work hard, you go there. And so I remember when I got to Alliance, I really wanted to immerse myself in the community. So do extracurricular activities, be a leader in school and give back. And through that process, I got an opportunity to be an exchange student, represent Alliance in the US. Mm. And this opportunity actually exposed me and told me that I wanted to go to university in the US. So when I came back to school at Alliance, I talked to my deputy principal and I told her that I want to study abroad. And she said, there's an opportunity um, through a program called Zawadi Africa mm. that looks for young, bright mm. girls from Africa and gives them the gift of education, the opportunity to you know, contribute to Africa. So I applied and I ended up at Meredith College. Meredith, Meredith. was that North Carolina? North Carolina, and that's where I studied my math degree. And I was also doing a dual degree program at NC State, where I was doing my civil engineering degree. So that began my story of transportation. Aha. Fast forward, and you end up at Uber. Yes. So after my undergrad, I went to UC Berkeley, where I did my master's in urban planning and focused on transportation. Right. As I was about to finish, I ended up at Uber. Wow. I was about to ask how old you are, but I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> Leo Tieno. Yes. So Buruburu, Buru, Carmel, was it? Uh, Carmel Ap Apostolic. Apostolic Carmel Girls, yeah. In Buruburu. Buru. Yes. And then? Um, well, first, the way I got to Apostolic, I didn't start there for my Form 1. Go on. I went to a school in Yahururu called Gatero Girls. And um, it's in Rift Valley. And so after post-election violence in 2007, I had to change schools. So I accidentally ended up in Apostolic Camel. Yeah, I looked for several schools and they were the only ones willing to take me, so that's where I went. Your whole family had to leave? Um, no, we didn't live in Rift Valley. I live with my aunt in Nairobi okay. because okay. my parents sent me to Nairobi to live with yeah. her yeah. for better schools. Yeah. So I lived with her while I went to school in Yahururu. So I'd commute three hours to school. Wow. And then um, when post-election violence happened, they didn't feel safe sending me to Nyahururu, being that I was a minority in the school. Mm. So they didn't want to risk it, so they decided to find a school for me in Nairobi. And that's how I ended up in Apostolic Camel. And then how did you hear about Zawadi? Um, my performance throughout high school had been really, really good, both in my previous school in Gatero and also in Apostolic. I actually ended up becoming second in my class for KCSC. Wow. And so... Um, I had a mentor growing up and she always, you know, she looked at my performance and said, you know what, you could always consider Zawadi Africa. So she ended up looking at my grades through Form 1 to um, Form 4 and I had nothing less than a B plus hmm. all those years. Yeah. So um, she found me an application and I filled it up and then went for the interview right yeah. after, a week after I finished KCSE. And you end up at Simpson, what's it yes. called? Simpson. Simpson College. Yeah, Simpson College in... Indianola, Iowa. <laughs> Wow, in the Midwest. Yes. Okay, so uh -huh. in your first year or second year, you discover you have... No, actually, that was in my... Um, after my third year, a week before the start of my senior year, which is the fourth year. Right. Yeah, I discovered I had leukemia. How? I mean, 
no signs growing up, nothing, no symptoms? No signs growing up, but I think two semesters before, I started feeling a bit tired, mm. my energy was waning, mm. and I think there was a lot of stress also, so that yeah. all led up to that. What was your first thought? My first thought, um, I, was, I was scared, yeah. really scared. You think you're going to die? Yeah, 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 it was very unexpected. In America? Yes, yes. Foreign land? Yeah. But I think I had to be grateful also for where I was. Without being that I was in Zawadi and I was able to go there, getting the perspective that I'm in a place where I can get the treatment, yes. that really helped. Yeah, because if had you been in Yahururu or, or, or Buruburu... Yeah, that wouldn't have happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And your mother was the donor? Actually, to correct that, I didn't, um, the cancer that I had, um, it was not that advanced, okay. so I was able to just do chemo, uh -huh. and that took care of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Susan, I'm going to ask you an unfair question, but it's, I'm going to ask anyway. Uh -huh. If it wasn't for you and your program, where would these people be? I don't know, where would you all be? <laughs> no, you know, I, I mean, I'll tell you, honestly, they would be, if not where they are, they, they would be doing more than their peers, that's for sure, because it's not just the education, it's also what they have inside them that, that drives them. So, you know, if Leila was selling shoes, mm. she would be the best shoe, shoe seller, seller at Milikiti. In, in Mombasa, probably in Kenya by now. Right. That, that's what they would Tell me doing. something, what do you look for in your girls when you're interviewing them, when they're going through that whole process? What are you looking for? You know, they come in, we know they're smart, so we don't look for that. Uh, we know they've done all these amazing things. We look for, I don't want to call it grit. We look, we look for pe people who are going to persevere. Um, because it is, this whole thing is a process. And if you don't, you know, Leila said that her friend gave up. Yeah. If you give up easily, you, you won't get through. Mm. So we look for people who are comfortable in the face of challenges, comfortable yeah. with barriers, and, and we know that they have the strength to overcome them. Okay, so let me ask each of you, Leila, starting with you, if it wasn't for Zawadi, where would you be? Selling shoes still? I'm probably, sorry, probably, like I said, uh, one of the things right now that I'm working for Zawadi, we look for problem solving. So I'll probably sell shoes, but I'll probably also be very rich as well, <laughs> finding other <laughs> solutions somewhere. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah, Kagure? Always, just growing up around in Nairobi, I always used to be bugged by traffic. And so I knew I wanted to go into transportation. Indeed. So I'd probably be some, somewhere doing something in transportation. Um, on, the, on, on the Ongata Rongai route? <laughs> probably in highway design or building roads. Yeah. Something yeah. related Are you to Are you going to help us solve this madness we call traffic in this city one day? I think, yeah. So thinking about it from the policies we make, yes. um, technology that we introduce yes. in the city and just yeah. the growth that we have in the country, um, there are steps that we yeah. can take. You like working for Uber? I do enjoy it. Yeah. I do enjoy it. Are they a game changer in this market? Yes. So in terms of a technology company that is having an impact in the city, mm. uh, offering safe and reliable transportation and just being a part of this growth, um, the economic opportunities in the city, is something I really like. Yeah, thanks to Alka Blow, right? I'm kidding. Uh, Le <laughs> Leah, if it wasn't for Zawadi, where would you be, honestly? Well, um, in high school, I discovered I really loved math and did really well at it. So I probably would have gone to um, study the business or yeah. math and been somewhere doing something with that. Yeah. Yeah. Were you guys all shocked you ended up in America? Uh, did, did any of you have dreams growing up of ever being going overseas for school, Leila? I've always wanted to be a doctor because my brother is a doctor. Um, thank God I've learned through a liberal arts education that that's not really what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I never thought in my wildest dreams yeah. I'll be going to America. What does your mother think of you now? My mother, she is proud of me. She watching you? She's traveling tonight oh. to Nairobi, oh. but I'm sure there'll be a YouTube somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll share that yeah, with her. Yeah, we hope. Kagure, <laughs> 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 yeah. did you ever, in your wildest dreams, think you'd end up in America? I, when I was little, I did not think so at all. And it wasn't until high school and hearing about Zawadi that I saw 
it is actually something that can become a reality because there's opportunity for scholarships yeah. to be able to study abroad. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity because Zawadi really did change my life. I think ending up in a liberal arts college, just learning different perspectives from leadership, from communication, yeah. business, and not just academics has really changed my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Leia, do you go back to Apostle Carmen thingy in Buruburu? Do you, do, you, do you go talk to them? Um, I recently went back, but I'm hoping to do more with them, taking the brunches to them. Yeah. I was talking to them, and their performance has really gone high. They really? had eight A's last year. When we were graduating, we only had two B pluses, three B pluses, actually. That was the top? Yeah, that was the top. So now they have eight A's, and now they're actually sponsoring other girls from Kibera. So I'm hoping to work with them to get those girls from Kibera into Zawadi. Now, you recently left Amrev Health. Yes. What yes. is it you want to do? Uh, finance or what, what's, yes. your, what's your... Yes, right now I'm looking for um, things in finance, probably like a financial analyst, um, because I did economics finance in college, and so I want to move. I'm, intentional, I'm intentionally moving towards that direction now. Mm. Yeah. Doctor, uh, has any one of your girls, the last 350 in the last 15 years, have any of them let you down? That's a tough question. Um, have any? No. None. We've 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 had one loss, oh. one who we've had to let go. Right. Um, so yes, in, in that. Those aren't sense, bad odds. Those are not bad odds. Yeah. Um, we, uh, but it, it it killed me at the time. I mean, I remember speaking to the president of that college. You know, when you've worked so hard to get a scholarship, and then saying to the president, she's not the right, yes, you know, material, yes, yes. and the president, all, you know, because actually the pr complaints had come from the school. Right. And he said the same thing. He said, don't feel so bad, you know, out of the number you yes. have, one is not, it's not, is, not, is not so bad. But I, I, you know, the reason I say let, let no is she hasn't let me down is because she then went on to do good things for herself. Okay. So, you know, something stuck. Yeah. Some of the things that we, yeah. we, we did stuck. Um, th they, they, you know, Le Leo was talking about going back to her school. I thought just very quickly, mm. one of the things that the girls have created is a program called uh, Beyond the Classroom. And what they do is they used to come back in the summer and go back to their schools. And so we've actually created a program around that. So during the summer, they go to high schools and talk to high school girls. Um, it's a life skills program. But, you know, you keep asking them, did you ever imagine? Yes. And, you know, at that age, you don't. You don't imagine. Yeah. So, but when you see someone who kind of looks like you, talks like you, came from the same place, yes. says, you can do this, it changes Your mindset. perspective, absolutely. Um, and and that, that really is, is the power of Zawadi. It's not so much, no, no, no offense, ladies, it's not so much, they, they are tools for something much bigger. Mm. So we've, we've reached, what, 20,000 20, 20, high school yes. girls is that right? so far. Um, but that's the real power of yeah. Zawadi. Speaking of reaching the girls, you're having a fundraiser coming up soon. soon. I we want to are. talk about that after the break, okay? What you're doing, how you're, how you're getting, how you're getting your next recruitment. Because this year, 20 girls went. About yes. 20, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. 20. 20, yes. And last year? Last year, we had 17. Wow. Yes. So it keeps increasing? Depending on the and year. And what year are you? 07? 07, yes. 08? 2010. Oh, just the other day. <laughs> Constitution yes. time. No, I'm kidding. I voted wow. for that. <laughs> wow, what a st you guys are so inspiring. You know that? We're going to read Thank some you. tweets afterwards, okay? I, you. I'm sure you're reaching girls out there. You've probably never heard of the scholarship, probably never heard of Zawadi, and now they think there is hope. There is hope. Just like the shoe, shoe seller from Mombasa. There's hope. Well done. Keep tweeting. At Susan Boya, at Zawadi Africa, at Koinanga Jeff. The hashtag best and brightest sitting right here at JKL live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski. We're going to take a quick break, come back, read your tweets and talk about the next recruitment, the next fundraiser. They still need money. This is not easy. Stay tuned. Chef Kanangi live. We'll be back. Somebody say in a moment. Somebody. In a in moment. A moment. <laughs> <laughs> so soft, man. Just... Watching Jeff Quinangi live.